Hi and welcome to the fourth installment of the Hardcore Skeptic, the supplemental podcast to go with the Brainstorm podcast. In this episode, I interview Jason Camo from Atheists on Air podcast, the YouTube channel Know the Truth, and the band Lost State of Mind. My intention was to talk with Jason about music, something a bit different from our usual content. I really like his music and thought it would be great to just talk about that for once. That day, right before the interview, I saw a post on his Facebook and I had to ask him about it. He's a talented guy who's very conscious of staying humble and thoughtful. It was a great chat, and I hope you enjoy listening to it. If you're a sound tech junkie, then I think you'll really enjoy this one. Here you go, my interview with Jason Camo on June 25th, 2015. Yeah, so I guess we were going to talk about your music, but I saw you posted something last night on mm-hmm. Facebook about uh, ranting about the atheist movement. Yeah, man, I uh, I have a <laughs> I, I've been a part of a few podcasts, and and I think uh, you know that I just I see things, and I'm not trying to come off like I'm this amazing like person that knows everything, and I'm like the smartest guy in the world, but. Um, there's just there are things that I see that a lot of atheists do that I would never do and I I, and I'll admit that it's one of those cases of I think that's stupid I wouldn't do that so why would anybody else do that right okay yeah it's one of those things but my my whole position is I like being involved with the atheist community I I like contributing I like making my my pastor J videos because they're you know I I think they're funny and they, they right Yep. But there, there are a few people out there who actually, before they're even big, they'll they'll go out there and they're, they're they'll start begging for money because they don't want to work. They'd rather make <laughs> a business. Wow. And, yeah. And, and I don't, and I don't see anything wrong with like there's people like Matt Dillahunty and Arn Raw that you know probably make a lot of money that don't have to work. I don't know their situations, but I think fucking that's great because they've worked hard for that but there are people who actually will just do nothing but beg for money oh, and, it okay. becomes, and it becomes more of a business and they end up <laughs> fucking they end up fucking the people over that i know well that actually want to contribute to the atheist community because they really care about people and they care about um you know people out there and it just it's just one of those things that i don't associate myself with certain people because of the things that they've said, the, the, the things that they do to try to keep themselves alive or active or whatever. And okay. I, I just don't agree Seems with Seems kind of underhanded almost. <laughs> there, there is a lot of underhandedness that goes on. You know, and I was telling my, my friend John last night, I said, because he does Godless Engineering, I'm like, look, you know, people ask for money for Patreon stuff. I don't, like, not that I, not that it should matter you know, my opinion shouldn't matter anyway, but um, when you aren't delivering good content, but you're expecting people to, like, yeah. give you all this stuff, that's where I just, it gets irritating for me because in my mind, I want people to have a good time. I want people to laugh. I want people to take these serious issues and for sure. be, be serious when they have to, but then at the same time, you know, just chill the fuck out. And, yeah. and so it's just, an, it's just a case of me observing things and me not being afraid to... to to stand up against a lot of the people in the atheist movement who aren't really doing good good things, and you know, and, and not not that I'll, I'll publicly fucking bash them because I'm not in that business, but I will make vague points if I have to, you know. So, right. Yeah. And so talking talking to John and and um, who the fuck did I name? I, I'm so tired right now, but <laughs> but talking to people last night is good because I get to vent my issues and I get to vent my my you know, what, what I'm having issues with. And I get to also not only vent, but also be clear in what I'm saying. So I don't come off like this pompous fucking jerk who gets mad at people because they don't do things my way. You know? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I, uh, I saw like, uh, Paul from Corona found me. Yeah. He had a, a, st- a similar post a while back about yeah. dealing with people. And I was like, I, am I just not encountering these people? But maybe that is all it is. Like, well, I, I think what it is too is, um, and, and I, I swear, to, I swear, I'm not trying to sound like big or anything like that, but I think one of the things that makes it easier for me to see all these things is I've, I've embedded myself with so many different people. Um, I, I, you know, I'm dating right. Rachel, um, so I'm part of the Atheist on Air crew. I think we have a this Sunday we have a 
an interview with uh, Chris Weber from the Paranormal. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I do the past J videos and work with John Gleason, so I'm very I'm tied in with a lot of different people, and I sure. and I have a lot of friends that that tell me like things that piss them off, and so it's not I'm not trying to sound like I'm this big fucking deal, but <laughs> I, I think it's just a matter of exposure, you know, like the more right, people yeah. start to see like a lot of this stuff, and and um, I, I just live in a world where. I feel like people are taking things way too fucking seriously sometimes. And, and, uh, you know, I used to listen to podcasts. I still do when I have time, but I used to listen to certain podcasts, uh, like, like cognitive dissonance. And oh, yeah. what I love about um, those two guys is, is they're able to take serious issues and kind of laugh about them and make jokes. And I think that's fucking genius. And sure. I hear too, I hear too many people today get too serious and then trying to, they, they become bigger than they are um, in their head, in their own heads. And they treat people. <laughs> They, they treat people the same way, and I, I, I have uh, – the friends that I have will always let me know if I start to become like that person. I never want to do that to people, you know, so. No, that's good. I just uh, – I saw your post, and I was, like, wondering, well, did yeah. I – like, am I seeing a different side of things? Is this a, a general thing or what? But it, it, Like I said, it's something that, that you start to notice the more um, – like the more the more involved you get with certain people, and and this is this has been going on for like the last year. So I've had like a year to like, um, <laughs> and I'm very observant. Like I, I I don't say a lot, um, but I observe a lot, and, and and I've changed a lot too. Like you know, a year ago I was probably in the same boat, but I started. I think what ended up happening is the people that I I I work closely with, um. And not just the people I work closely with, but the people that I would I would see that were kind of like the people I work closely with. I, I I started to realize that when I wasn't treated right, it opened up my eyes a lot. Um, how do I say it? Uh, I saw things differently, and, and it made me uh, distinguish the good from the bad. I guess. And so I think when you get burned, you, you know, your radar is a lot more active, and you start to notice For sure. a lot. A yeah. lot more people, um, and I, I think that's really, really what it comes down to. And, and, I, and again, I say all that with the idea that I know I'm not the best person, and you know the like the, the smartest individual out there. And I won't even I won't even lay claim to that to the fact that I'm the best atheist and I represent the community the best. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. saying that at all. Yeah, but, you seem like a pretty humble guy, actually. So yeah, I, I try, you know, because I don't want to be those kind of people at all. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, for sure. Yeah get up all in your head and <laughs> yeah yeah you know, I, and, and you, you, what's funny too is is i feel like it's it's the same idea like you know you know you hear this a lot and people get really pissed off at this but i feel like a lot of atheists become very religious with what they do and how they pre present themselves yeah probably. And, and, and you end up getting this this thing where it's like like if people are going to like what i do i want them to like it because of what I do and what the people that help me. I mean, I have a lot of people that help me, like with Pastor Jay, you know, Jay Crowfoot, Jeremy Stevens, all these great guys that write scripts for me and stuff. Right. And, um, and 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 I want people to like what I do because of that. I don't want to force people to like me because you know they have to give me money or <laughs> yeah. or because I, I'm I'm presenting myself um, in a false in a false way. You know, it's it's like this idea of like. And this is a far-reaching thing, but it's like with God. God threatens, threatens people with hell, so they like him. I don't, <laughs> yeah. think that's, I don't think that's real love. I think that's like I have to like you because either you're mean to me or, or you're making me give you something. And I, I'd never want to do that to people. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it. That makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, man, we can we can talk about anything you want. Um, you know, I'm... Yeah, I don't know. I was... Uh... I was listening to your album again this morning here, this, yep. uh, oh, I can't remember which one. Is it the one where I was singing, or is it all instrumental? Uh, Forever is the name of the album. Yes. Yep, Forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pretty good, though. Like, that's really good stuff. I, uh, yeah. I actually caught myself, uh, there was one part, I, just, Hello. just as I was coming downstairs from, uh, doing things upstairs, I, one part of it just. I was like, holy shit, that's friggin' awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can I can explain that album if if you want. Sure, uh, yeah. I base okay, so it, it's I've been writing music for about I guess about ten years now. Um, I've been playing the guitar for a lot longer than that. You know, I, I actually uh, 
you know, the first albums I ever owned as a child was a Metallica Black album, uh, Queen's Reich Empire album, and Nirvana's uh, Nevermind. And I think I had an REM album, but <laughs> so I got exposed to the guitar. I got exposed to the moody, like the moody type, that dark type. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, um, it wasn't until I joined the Marine Corps that um, I started playing the guitar, and that was because I was over a friend's house one day to hang out with my friend, and, and he wasn't there. His brother was there, and his brother – we were bored, and his brother was like, you want to play the guitar? And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, sure, I guess. And so uh, um, he, he showed me how to read guitar tablature, and, I, and and I've always loved music. I just didn't know how to how to play it, right? I didn't know how to play the guitar or the piano. Right. Like that. And so he shows me how to read guitar tablature, which is something you can learn in five seconds, and when I came home from leave, I bought a guitar first thing, and I just I started playing, and um, I spent. That's why I was a good Marine because I spent most of my time in the Marine Corps playing my guitar rather than going out and like getting myself in trouble, right? Okay, yeah. And um, it wasn't until about 2005 or 2006 that somebody at the job that I was working at gave me a pirated copy of the, the software, a Sonar Cakewalk. Okay. And. I started playing around with it, but it wasn't until a couple of years later that I, I actually started writing music because I um, I bought this looper pedal, and it allowed me to, to create different sounds and combine them together, and I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, I can take this sound and this sound, and because with the looper, you can play something, it loops, and then you can just play something over top of that, and so I started, I, I ended up writing my first ever album, which sounded like shit, and I don't even have a give it anymore which really sucks because I, I would love to redo it but um i remember i bought this a couple of years after that. you know so i'm writing all this music i'm trying to figure out a way to actually make it sound decent and i ended up going uh doing online courses at the berkeley college of music right that, happened, that was an accident because <laughs> well because i had this program called melodyne which is kind of like an auto-tune program but it's more um in depth you can you actually get in there and actually tweak your vocals a lot better and everything. And that company sent me an email saying, hey, we have this class at the studio if you want to come. So I went to the studio where, I, where the studio is like, yeah, we can teach you how to do all this stuff for like a billion dollars. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, it didn't work out, but I but the bug hit me. And I was like, I got to go to school. So then I, I, I used my GI Bill, went to Berkeley. And then I started using Pro Tools and you know I did all that stuff. Um, wow. So... Um, then I started taking, um, and by this point, you know, with school, I already kind of had a bunch of songs written with Sonar or Cakewalk, because I took some classes in that. And then I started um, using all these different programs, started writing all this music, and um, it wasn't until the album Forever that I really, like, hunkered down and actually um, decided to make it a serious thing. Um, and, and I had, a lot of the songs on that album were written um, a while, you know, before I actually decided to make this an album. Okay. Um, but the whole concept for the album came about, um, and feel free to interrupt me, by the way. I mean, I, I don't mind questions or whatever, but... Um, no, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole the whole concept for the album came about because um, I... I was dating this this uh, this woman, and and for the most part, the relationship wasn't a bad relationship, but some some shit happened, um, and it, it affected me a lot. And and there was a certain I, I won't go into detail with that, but there was a certain situation that you know got me mad. I ended up um, I wasn't living at the house anymore, and I was I was I remember I was driving in the car with my one of my best friends, Rick, and. Um, I I was under the impression that the girl that I was seeing, because all my stuff was still at her house, I was under the impression that she was going to take everything I owned and burn it, right? Oh, jeez. Yeah. And it, it made me so mad that I actually told my friend that if she did that, and, the, and I'm an atheist, by the way, but this is <laughs> my process. I thought I would, if she does that, I, I would literally sit at the edge of heaven just to watch her burn forever. <laughs> right. and, it, it's honestly like one of the meanest things I feel like I've ever said about it. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty bitter thing to say. Eh? <laughs> yeah. And when I said that, I got these, I got chills, and then I, I thought, you know, holy fuck, like what the, what's coming out of my mouth? And so, so things kind of blew over. I ended up moving out, and and I was living with my one of my best friends, Jen. You see her in a lot of my uh, Pastor Jay videos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she was in the Rockstar. Yep. 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 <laughs> 
I think was, I think Rockstar was the first video I ever did, by the way. Um, and you can tell too; it's not all chopped <laughs> up. But, but so I, also. yeah. <laughs> If you like the Brainstorm podcast and want to get more of it, you can go to patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast for bonus material, early ad free episodes and a shout out in the next episode. Special Brainstorm gear bonuses for different Patreon levels are available. You can get your own Brainstorm shirts, mugs and lots more from cafepress.ca forward slash brainstorm podcast gear. Thanks for your support. We are given one life full of billions of small and large decisions to be somebody, to change, to be kind, to give hope, to become a better person, and to leave a lasting impact on this planet. It is a decision to be made every single day while your heart is still beating. We've made our decision. Absence of clothing. Atheist and science-based apparel and merchandise, donating 50% of our profits to charity. Look good and feel good, without God. Check us out at absenceofclothing.com and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest for discount codes and other sweet swag. Use the code BRAINSTORM at absenceofclothing.com and get 10% off. So I started work on this album, and you have... um. Um, of course, all the album art I, I do myself, and um, I, I wanted this album to kind of follow this, almost like a downward spiral from Nine Inch Nails, where it starts off with like this, you know, happy, you know, I'm in love with this person, until at the very end, um, you have, you know, if you listen to the song forever, it's the last song, it's just, an, it's a repetitive instrumental, and, and you hear me in this weird demonic voice saying, I'd sit at heaven's edge just to watch you burn forever, and, um, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if I let me look at something real quick. Yep. Okay, you like my album. So <laughs> yeah, um, don't forget was was a song that I wrote about her, um, and it was kind of written because she was going through a hard time when we first started dating because uh, uh, she was getting a lot of backlash from people because she you know divorced her husband at the time. A lot of people thought it was because of me, which wasn't the case, but. Um, I, I, I basically got into this really dark place to make this album happen. Um, some of the songs that I wrote that were new for this album um, was I Am Alone um, and Just Kidding. Okay. Um, uh, and what's what's kind of what's kind of weird about this album is it's like it's uh, I remember when it was a, was a song written way before her, but. Um, uh, I am alone is a song that I think it's probably the darkest song on that album because it's just this idea of basically I didn't have anybody and I just felt I was at the point where I was like I, I have nobody you know even though I had my roommate there and she was awesome to me and everything but um, but just kidding was a was a I don't know I'll, I'll tell you, I'm kind of proud of these lyrics but there was a part in it where I basically say. Uh, can I cuss on this? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Go right ahead. <laughs> well, the second the second verse basically kind of runs on, and it basically says, "Fuck your insecurities, fuck your shallow little dreams, fuck your bright golden crown, fuck always and forever, um, fuck your your subtle purity, fuck you when I start to scream, fuck your signs in the sky. I'm sorry, I hate you. Just kidding." So it's like this kind of like tongue in cheek, <laughs> like yeah, right. like we've always pulled it together. Just kidding, and it's just like I, I think a lot of the lyrics that I write in my music are very tongue-in-cheek very sarcastic um because i feel like that's the way i deal with a lot of negativity is by being a smart ass about it but of course with my, the music part of it becomes you know becomes a lot darker right um but um yeah that that was a, that was a very hard album to write because it was the first time that i wrote anything while i was going through some some bullshit that now it doesn't seem like a big deal but at the time was a uh, was a heavy thing for me you know right um of course a couple months later, I wrote the album Portsmouth, which is material that I wrote that was basically all brand new. And I decided that, and this has kind of been a, a theme as of late, um, I decided that I didn't want to sing. Um, because when I wrote Portsmouth, I was in, even, in, in an even darker place. Okay. 
and I didn't know what to say. And so I just wrote a, a bunch of lyrics and I decided to make the title of the songs kind of represent what I was trying to get get at. And and I decided to port cuz Portsmouth the album I was living in a in a town called Portsmouth up in New Hampshire and um, I started, you know, there's a lot of ocean. I used to go for walks all the time. I'd see the ocean. And I decided to, to combine this concept of being stuck out in the ocean and, and kind of having the songs represent all the things, like how the ocean could kind of represent uh, a human's thoughts and feelings, like the, the calm, the angry, the chaotic, and, and all this different stuff. And I kind mm-hmm. of wrote, yeah, and I kind of wrote all these, all these titles, um, in code and they're long fucking titles too they're not you know, <laughs> but one of the songs is called helplessly we watched as the ocean consumed us there was never an escape two sailors lost in the drift of time um uh let me, let me look at another one um like the, the the very last song is called looking back i still shudder even at the calm sea you know and it's just <laughs> a lot it's like a lot of the a lot of this um one of them, one of them, she actually, um, when her and I were still talking, she actually laughed at this. I, one of the songs I wrote, uh, it's called Captain Sullivan Lost His Crew on the Stomach of Your Ship Twice, or maybe it was Thrice, Who Really Knows Anymore? <laughs> and if you really think about that title, you can kind of know what I'm, what I'm getting at. But I, I wanted it to have that ocean reference, and it, it really helped me cope with a lot of shit. It, it, it helped me cope with um, the, the pain I was going through, and it distracted me from – from doing anything that, that could have been a lot worse, you know. Oh well, yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty good music anyway. Like. Yeah. And so, how old were you when you wrote uh, "Forever"? Um. Okay, so that's that's kind of a tough question. I I wrote some of those songs about maybe three or four years ago, so I might have been like thirty-one or thirty-two. Oh, okay. Um. Let me. There's the song Angel, that's the second song on the album Forever. That one was actually written maybe five or six years ago. Oh, okay, wow. And it, it's it's that song is a good case of one of those songs. Actually, it could have been longer than that. That, that song is a good case of one of those songs that was 99% finished, meaning there was something wrong with it. I, I didn't know what it was, and I decided to change the way I played the chorus. Oh, okay. And... Hmm. When I, so when you hear the guitar and the chorus, it sounds different from the guitar and the verse. Well, before the verse guitar and the chorus guitar were the same exact thing. But I added this this kind of, like, I guess I would say it's like an epic guitar riff for the chorus. And, and, it, it, and it worked, and it fit within the, the concept of, of the song, you know. Um, and and one, one of the things that, you know, when I, whenever I talk about music to people, one of the things I like to say um, with, with the equipment that I use is um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, like, modern metal, gent-style music, um, the eight-string guitars. But when I wrote for some parts of Forever and when I wrote um, Portsmouth, I wrote those on a seven-string guitar. And oh, okay. I tuned down to G sharp, which is like a really, really low tuning. Tuning. Um, I have an eight string now that I use. I still tune to that, you know, that that tuning. But I feel like with the mood, with with what I write and, and how I I portray my thoughts and my feelings and everything, I I feel like I need that low tune. And I don't necessarily play that heavy metal because I don't scream or anything like that. I don't like. You're not into the. Uh, metalcore or nothing like that? Oh no no, I'm into that. <laughs> I, I'm really, I, I really am. I mean, there there are bands out there like In Your Parkway Drive, um, Periphery. I mean, I can name a million of these bands. I love their style, but for some reason, like I, you know, I'm very simplistic with what I write, and and I I just it's like either I'm lazy or I just don't have the ability, but I I can't write these complex rhythms. Mm. Um, and I also like, like with my style, I like to combine like a low heavy tuning with really high ambient, you know, I like to combine those textures, you know? And so I found my niche with that. I I feel, I feel like that, um, that works better for me. And I feel that a lot more with my own writing. Now with the new album that I'm working on, I'm trying to get faster and I'm trying to get heavier. Right. Um, because I want to do something different. I don't want my last my next album to sound like my last two in any way, you know, but I still wanted to have my own, my own, my own style, but, um, it can be tough, you know, especially with me, I have so many tools at my disposal. Um, it's, it's hard because 
oh, I want to use I want to use a piano, but I have like seven piano software synths that I can. Oh, use. geez. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I, I, I want to use the drums for this next track, but I have like over ten thousand like MIDI um, drum MIDI that I uh, drum MIDI pieces that I could use. Um, and <laughs> so, so how do you decide? Eh? <laughs> It, well, I think a lot of it is I'll find – like I'll write a guitar riff because um, most of my music starts off with the guitar. Like I'll write this cool riff and I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of neat. Let's see where I can go with that. And then I'll lay down like some type of drum pattern. And I use a program called Easy Drummer 2 from Toontrack. Okay. I also have a drum program called Superior Drummer. And um, they're the same company, but Superior Drummer is more involved. You can edit and mix more, whereas Easy Drummer is already kind of mixed for you. I go back and forth. But Easy Drummer 2 just came out with this new thing where you can find the beat. Right? I write this guitar riff. I lay down this cool drum beat that I think is okay. And then what I do is I edit that MIDI so I can make the drum beat fit you know, the, the guitar piece. So I'm not just taking okay. stock. I, I can actually move the, the drum hits around and make it fit. And then I can, I can take that MIDI and add it to this box in the Easy Drummer, and it searches out all the MIDI that kind of, you know, correlates with that, and then I go from there. Like, I never use, I, I'll use stock drums, but then I always go in and edit it to fit the, the riff that I play, because there might be a riff where I'm, like, playing triplets, but the drum beat only has, like, for the kick drum, might only have one hit, so I might have to go in there and add a couple more kick drums, or, okay. or the snares around to make it fit. So it becomes, it's not too involved, but it becomes... Uh, it can kind of become a nightmare, especially when you... <laughs> Sounds when, like a lot of work. Yeah, it, it, it is, man. But it, it's one of those things that, like, it looks complicated on the outside, but the more you get to know your program... Um, right. like anything, I guess, eh? <laughs> uh, exactly. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like, and I tell people this a lot whenever, whenever I talk about music, is learn the software that you have, even if you don't think um, that you're going to use that particular piece of the software. Um, I remember in college, um, uh, we were learning. I was learning about something in Pro Tools. You have different editing styles. You can, uh, you have a uh, an editing style called slip slip mode, and then you have grid mode. And in grid mode, the clips will match to the to the grid, right? Okay. Slip mode doesn't do that, and I thought I'm never going to use slip mode. It's stupid. Why why do they have have that? Well, I started to use that a lot, and. Huh. I, you know, if I didn't learn that, it would have made my, my, my process a lot more complicated. You know, so with Pro Tools, I learned all the shortcut keys. I learned so I could run through a Pro Tools session no problem, and I've I've compartmentalized everything, and that's really? only because that's only because I, I I dug in. I learned everything about the software, and once you get that down, then everything becomes easy except for the creativity part. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem to have enough of that, like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I try. When it comes to my music, it, it's hard to to um, to get people to um, um, collaborate because with music, it becomes a really personal thing, especially when you've been writing as as long as I have by yourself. And, and I still have people critique uh, what I do. I have a friend who's passed away now. Um, he he used to critique my albums all the time. His wife now will critique the music that I write. Um, um, and I'm very picky with who I like critique because only a few people really know my style and, and like can understand where I'm trying to go with some you know certain things. So I've had people write lyrics for me. The song it's not on my albums yet, but it's called Recluse. It's on my SoundCloud page. My okay. friend Jeremy, my friend Jeremy Stevens wrote the the lyrics to that. And um, but yeah, when it comes to creativity, like like you said, when you said I had plenty of that, I mean, with a lot of other aspects of of what I do with my other. Um, uh, adventures like the my YouTube videos and stuff. I I, I do have a lot of help for that. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Oh yeah. Outside input. Absolutely. I mean, I I in fact, in fact my one of my script writers um, just sent me a, a script last night that was so fucking funny that I was in bed while Rachel was sleeping and I was trying not to laugh because it was so <laughs> right. funny. And I'm a big fan in in uh, in, in uh, accepting. I'm a big fan in, in accepting other people's input because I realize that you know it, it it takes a village sometimes to raise a child, and I know it doesn't make sense at first, but when you're writing a song, you're writing you know doing something for a video, doing a podcast, it's like I feel like you need other people there because I might think I, I know all the answers, I might think I, I I wrote the best fucking song on the planet, and then I have somebody listen to it who knows my style, and then they go, hey, maybe you should take out this verse, maybe you should do the drums differently. 
I and I'm like, holy fuck, you're right. I, I didn't even think about doing that. And 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 a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people will just sit back and they don't want anybody's help. And some people can get away with that. That's fine. But um, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, it's. I'm sure even Trent Reznor has uh, has people that help him out. And you know. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> <it helps. laughs> For sure. Yeah. Always, I'm sure he always has. Like even when he was at his most alone or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and I, and that's the thing is it's, it's, you have to value those people and you have to let them know how important they are because the more important they feel, the more that, um, they want, um, to help you in the future. The, the song on forever called I am alone. Um, I wrote that while I was living with my, my roommate, Jen, and she actually wrote the lyrics for I am alone. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And I, I was at a point where I, I knew what I was trying to get at, but I didn't know how to actually say how I felt, right? Because I'm not good at writing dark stuff when I'm going through something. It's just I'm too distracted. And <laughs> so she wrote the lyrics to that, and uh, spot on, man. It fit the music perfectly, and and I and I think what's great about it is she knew what I was going through at the time, and she was able to take that and then write lyrics, and I was able to take those lyrics and kind of just put them in place and, and make them work. And I gave her credit for that. I want people to know that she had something to do with that. Well, she must have known you pretty well too to know what you were getting at. And oh yeah, I mean, she she knew the situation. She knew what I was going through. She um, uh, and I've known her for three or four years now, and you know, we're, we're, you know, we're best friends. And so yeah, you know, when you when you know somebody that well, it's easy to write. Um, that's why I'm a big fan of being friends with the people I collaborate with too, because the more right. they know, you, the more you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, it's um. Um, I, I want to get back to the point where I was in in my past. You know, I want to at some point in the future get a studio again. My, my favorite amps that I like to use are um, uh, the PV fifty one fifty. It's an old Eddie Van Halen amp, but it okay. comes out. You get this killer metal tone, nice. and then I want to get a, a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier head, and I want to get a. a uh, a Mesa Boogie oversized cabinet. Those are the amps that I used to have, and I wrote a lot of songs with those. But lately, I've been writing with my 11 rack, um, w which isn't an amp, but it's like a, a plug, and it's like an emulator that will, will mimic an amp sound. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's tough not using a real amp, but if you know the dynamics of how a real amp works, you can kind of get close to the, you know. <laughs> right, you're looking for a sound. I guess it's not how it... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you can achieve it. It's just a matter of, like, tricking people's ears. Normally, I wouldn't put a song into a supplemental episode. They're not usually long enough to warrant it. But this interview is almost an hour long, and it's mainly about music, so to me, it makes sense to put a song in. I'm even going to ignore my under four minutes rule so that I can pick one of my favorites off the album, Portsmouth. Honestly, the title of the song really is what drew me to this one, and I'm glad it did, because I really enjoy it. I might even ask Jason if I can use this as our regular outro music. If you're not into instrumentals, but want to get back to the interview, then go ahead and skip ahead around five minutes. This is, I know it meant nothing, it just meant all the wrong things to me, I'm still sinking, I wish I could tell you how bad this really is.
and and, and there's, there's a lot of techniques. And, you know, for anybody that's listening who who is new to recording, um, who's having a hard time getting their recordings to sound good, um, I'll, I'll give you some some tips on like like for the guitar, uh, for example, when I used to write, I used to write. Let, let's say there's a verse guitar riff, right? I would write that verse guitar, and I would pan that guitar riff to the left, and then I would just copy that same riff and pan it to the right okay. to try to get this wall of sound. But it, it never worked for me. I could never figure out what, what the hell is going on. Why can't I get this wall of sound that most of these big bands get? And so I realized that what these bands do is pretty much the same thing I was doing, except for I was making the mistake of not re-recording that guitar riff. And oh. so, so what, what, and this applies to if you're doing an epic, huge wall of sound, or if you're just doing a simple guitar riff, what you have to do is record the guitar riff. And once you're done recording that one guitar riff, pan it, and then re-record the guitar riff the exact same way. And try to have your timing, try to be as accurate as possible. And then you take that guitar riff and you pan it to the right. Um, and, and how far you pan it is up to the, the user. But what that does is the minor inconsistencies between the two um, uh, guitar riffs, well, uh, it actually gives you more of a stereo sound. Kind of a more full noise. Oh, God, yeah. And what I've got, what I've started to do, and actually what I've been doing for quite a while now, is I would combine uh, guitar amps. So what I do now is I'll find the very slightly, dis if I'm trying to get this big, huge distortion sound, I actually do this new technique with my 11 rack where I'll take this really slightly distorted riff. Very clean, but very distorted, but, you know, not over the top. And I record left and right, and then I'll, I'll actually take another guitar, another amp style, and with that's way more distorted, like over, almost over the top, and I do the same exact thing. So now I have two guitar tracks to the left, two on the right, both with the two different styles of amps, and I, and I blend those amps together. Um, okay. We, and, and in fact, that's what a lot of musicians do in the studio. Right? Yeah, uh, Kill Switch Engage is, is one of the bands that I, I, I still look up to. Their, their tone's great, their, their guitar riffs are great. And they, uh, they use a, a combination of uh, PV, either 5150 or 60. Um, what are the other, what's the other one? There's 5150 and the. I can't remember the other one, but um, 6150? Like I can't remember, but they'll use that combination. They'll sometimes combine it with like a Framus uh, Cobra amp, or they'll they'll sometimes combine it with a, a Mesa Boogie amp. And what they do is these these two amp tones are entirely different, and they basically well they'll set they'll re, they'll record four separate tracks with the different amp settings and they'll blend them together. And when I when I learned that, I realized that's why I can never get a great guitar tone out of my one guitar amp because. They're not using just one guitar amp. They're using like four different amps, you know, and combining them. And right. um, that's been a trick used for the longest time. Now, I, I got to the point where I was dual micing my, my cabinet. I would take a, a an SM57 microphone and combine it with a, um, a Sennheiser MD421. So that now I would get to the point with some of my songs. There's a song on SoundCloud that I have called Lost. That I think is like the song that everyone likes. It's like my only atheist song. And... <laughs> I, that's, those guitar riffs are actually with the two, you know, imagine this, I have, I have two different amps, I have two different microphones, so for my left and right channel, I had a total of like four tracks on the left side and four tracks on the right side, and I have to play all these tracks perfectly <laughs> to make it so they're not, it doesn't sound like a pile of garbage, but once you have it all together, man, it sounds like, it's very intense, um, but I feel like a lot of that, you know, a lot of the knowledge I, I, I gained came from school. I wouldn't have learned about the proximity effect of microphones, you know, or if a microphone's too close, it's going to sound really bassy versus farther away. And, right. And I, I couldn't have had any of that, of that without my schooling. But I also have this thing where I'm so obsessed with music and how to make it sound good that I'm always learning something new. And But, yeah. But but still, with all that being said, I still have a long way to go. Um <laughs> I really do. I mean, I still have a long way to go to sound like who I want to sound like, and that's that's part of the process of, of being a musician. You're, you're trying to learn how to be the people that you look up to, and you're trying to be better than them. Yeah, I suppose. Eh? That's something that uh, a lot of people have always, I don't know, they bitch about a band that changed their sound. Yeah. And I always kind of was, well, they kind of got to grow, don't they? <laughs> they got to... 
Yeah, yeah. And, and it, yeah, and you know what's funny about that is is and, and I, I've had bands that do the same thing. Like one, one of the one of my favorite bands on the planet is uh, or not bands but musicians is Trent Reznor. Right. But even I'll admit that, except for the last album he just put out, which is, which is actually pretty good, he, he put out a couple of albums that I was like, oh my god, dude, you sound like, this is so repetitive, and you know, not every song, but there were <laughs> right. a lot of songs on like, you're doing the same type of singing, you're doing the same type of lyrics, come on, and I know Rachel and I disagree on that, because she, you know, she grew up a little bit later and, and got into them a little bit later, but... But yeah, there are a lot of bands like Metallica is a good example. I grew up with the Black album, so every album before that, I don't really care about, even though people will fight. Me <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I got I gotta disagree with you there. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. And but I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I grew up with the Black album, so right. I, I wasn't exposed to the earlier stuff right away. I wasn't into the fash metal at the time. Um, but I do appreciate what they did. So I'm not saying that there was bad. It's just not something that I was it's used to. Yeah. Right? But what what I think a lot of people don't realize um, is the fact that there are so many um, elements in play here when it, when, a, when a band decides to change the sound. Maybe they're just tired of playing what what they've done. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe they decided to get like a, all new equipment. Maybe they're working with a, a, a new uh, producer. For sure, um, yeah. You know, what one thing I learned a lot. I, I was actually watching a couple of weeks. ago, I was watching this Corn documentary when they came out with their latest album with the one that heads back. On. Oh, okay, yeah, I haven't heard that one yet. So, I, I think I heard one song, but yeah, um, I still like Corn. I still appreciate them, but I don't listen to them. Yeah, like I haven't I listened did. to Corn in a yeah. long time. But one thing I will say about Corn is I, I love the raw emotion that Jonathan Davis put out. Oh, yeah. I'm not a, not a huge fan of the singing, but I do appreciate everything they do. But one thing I learned and I thought was really cool is they brought in a producer for that album, who's a good yeah. producer. But I don't know if this – I forget his name, but I don't know if he actually worked with this style of music before. And and at first glance, the guy kind of looks like, like a dork, like, oh, he's not into this kind of music, right? And it took a long time, according to this documentary, it took him a long time to kind of warm up to the crew. But what he started to do was he – I remember there's one scene where he, he told the guys, like, look, you guys have all these great songs. Why don't you take this song, take the chorus out of this song and put it into this song? Okay. And I thought, holy, and I thought that was great because they listened to him, they, they did what he said, and the song became a lot better. Right. The this, this song. But the thing is, is, is I feel like sometimes producers have a lot to do with the sound too because you have a new producer that has a new way of thinking. And so there's a lot of reasons why I think why bands change. Um, I know with me, with this new album, it might sound the same, but it might be different because I'm just tired of writing like the slow, boring shit that I've been writing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I guess if yeah, yeah, you want to speed it up, then. Yeah, exactly. And who knows? Maybe someone will, will jump on board and collaborate with me. Maybe they'll they'll come up with a new input. Maybe someone I know knows how to scream. And they want to scream on all my songs. Sure, let's do it, man. <laughs> and, and so I try to do the best I can to to give uh, some leeway to a lot of these bands when they change. It doesn't mean I still like the new albums. It just means I, I try right. to understand, like, okay, they did this because maybe this, maybe that. But when it comes to music, it's very subjective, and sometimes even the own, even the band gets sick of hearing themselves after a while, I think. Well, I'm sure they do, yeah. <laughs> Especially uh, if you got to play the same songs on stage for decades. <laughs> it must be frustrating. I get frustrated when I'm in the edit mode of writing my music, where I'm listening to this, to my music because I don't listen to my music, and once it's out there, I, I don't <laughs> right. It. And um, because I'm too critical, I don't listen to my music in a, from a stance of oh, I, I'm gonna enjoy the song. I listen to it like oh, I'm gonna critique the song, and you know, yeah. like yeah. And, and I, I have to learn to like just put the song out there when it's done, even if I've made an editing mistake, or even if I ten years from now I could have produced it better. Just leave it alone, move on. Otherwise, I'm stuck with the same music. But, um, but yeah, I, I get to the point where I have to listen to an album over and over and over again to hear any mistakes, to hear how it could be better. And dude, I, I don't think I could ever play live, man. <laughs> I just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and that's the other thing is I don't want to relive all these all these moments too. You know that that's the right. Other yeah. Because because when I write, I really put everything I have into 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 what I write, and and there's just there are just some songs that 
don't apply to me anymore. Like right now, I'm in I'm in a really good relationship, you know. And right, so it's hard to put yourself emotionally yeah, in that same space, eh? It, exactly, it, it's hard to, and, and, you know. And not only am I in a in a new good relationship, I'm also very indifferent to what happened in the past. I don't care anymore. It's it's done. It's over. Whatever. I learned from it, and so it, it's at the point where I if if I were to listen to a song. I'm not saying I couldn't listen to it, but I am saying that I'm kind of more like, okay, this is getting old. Let's let's do something different, you know. So I'm always trying to. I, I try not to live in, in that past. I want it to be one of those things where when people look at my albums, they can see this pattern of, okay, here was a dark time. This is where things got better, and, and so I'm. It, it, it's it's a learning process. It's a constant learning process of how I'm going to do things different. And I, I love that. I love the challenge. That's why I'm one of the reasons why I'm so into writing music because there is no right answer. Uh, there, you know, there's right. no wrong. Uh, there, there actually, there are some wrong answers. <laughs> some things you shouldn't do uh, when it comes to editing and production and stuff like that. But um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool, though. I, I don't, I don't cuss a lot in my music, um, but I, I, it's not intentional. I just feel like for me, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to put my feelings and my thoughts across without having to resort to that. But I, there are some songs where I cuss, like in my pleasure, I say fuck like a bunch of times. Right. I think it's more of an emphasis thing because, you know, I feel like with, with my, with the way I, I write lyrics and, and the way I, I you know, present my thoughts, I feel like saying things like I'd sit at heaven's edge just to watch you burn forever is a lot more effective at conveying what I'm feeling than fuck you, you're a piece of shit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, it's more, uh, detailed, I guess you could say. Like, it gives a better picture of what a person's yeah. thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could say fuck you to just about anybody. <laughs> and, right. yeah, and another thing, too, this is for anybody that's listening who, who's, like, working on writing music, and, and this is a little tip, um, kind of give you an idea of how I, I how I put some of my music together. Um, a lot of times when I'm running into a situation where I, um, I, I I've run out of, out of ideas, um, I do this thing where I will write a guitar riff, I'll put the drum beat down, and then I'll write a guitar riff over that guitar riff, something different, and then I'll write a guitar riff over that guitar riff. You know, so I have like three or four or five different tracks. Okay. With a guitar and or a bass riff and the drum beat, and, and try to visualize this if you will. If you have this program, you have like four or five tracks all in the column. There's like one guitar track over the other, and they all sound like they fit with each other. Then what I do is I copy and paste everything a bunch of times, so I have this huge block of the same thing over and over again, right? Right. And then what I do is I start cutting out pieces of it. It's like sculpting a song. Right. This is how. I, this is how I get the basic idea of the song down, you know, because it changes so much from here. But I end up going, okay, for the verse, I don't want four of these guitar tracks. I just want this one. So I take out for the verse section, I take out everything except for that one guitar riff. Then for the chorus, I might I might put back in a couple of guitar you know riffs and then take out two more. And now what I have is I have a basic concept of how I want the song to sound. And then I go in there and I start doing like you know some surgical strikes and you know on everything I start re-recording I start um, layering um, and and where I, I got a lot of that from because my music for anybody that listens is very repetitive a lot especially with the with the instrumental music um, I like repetition a lot of people don't a lot of musicians I know um, my girlfriend's brother he he's not repetitive at all and he's brilliant at what he does right. Um, I'm not good at not being repetitive because I like to hear that 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 um, that sound over and over again, right? Um, I got a lot of that from this this guy named Ben Sharp. He he uh, fronts this. Uh, I don't think he's a band. He's toured live, but I think he does what I do. He writes music and he puts it out. But he does something called Cloud Kicker. Oh, I thought I saw something posted uh, the other day he, about that. Uh, yep, I I highly recommend anybody. Um, who likes my music or anybody who um, likes instrumental music to listen to Cloud Kicker. It's on Bandcamp. I think it's still all free. He has like fucking 10 albums already. Oh, jeez. And his music, it, Cloud Kicker is probably my, my, my favorite band of all time, my favorite, you know, actor, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
it's not saying that these other bands I grew up with are bad. It's just this guy knows how to take music and do things with my brain that nobody else <laughs> has ever been able to do. And he also does a lot of technique. He does the, repeti- the, the repetitive stuff, but he makes it interesting where it's not just repetitive. He, he'll add changes here and there. And he, and he uses this instrument called – oh, it's not an instrument. It's just uh, – it's a tool called an Evo. And it, it's like this little – contraption, you put a 9-volt battery in it, and you put it over your string, and it makes your strings resonate pretty much forever, at least until the battery dies. Wow. And if you listen if you listen to the album Beacons, um, he does a lot of that. And uh, for anybody that's listening, listen listen to the song called Push It Way Up off the album Beacons. That That's the best example. It's one of my favorite songs by him, but it's the best example of the use of the Evo. And I started to use that a lot, too. So there's a lot of, uh, hey, I want to copy what you're doing, because that sounds neat. <laughs> there, and um, but anyways, he, he, he incorporated that technique with the repetition and, and that's kind of, I, I saw somewhere that's how he writes. So I started to do that too. And for, I, I don't do that often, but I do it when I'm, when I'm running into a, a, a uh, an artistic block. If I'm like, I cannot figure out what, where to go with this, I will start doing that and it really helps. So, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I mean, uh... I'm not a uh, like I don't know a lot about uh, sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm still learning, even just with the podcast. Like our, we usually record in a studio with a sound tech, and he yeah. knows all the stuff you're talking about. Right, right, I'm right, sure. Right. But, and I, I and I apologize to anybody who's listening who who I who I lost <laughs> with the the technical stuff. You know, I I wanted to you know I know we we're talking about my albums and everything, but yeah, it's it it. it it, it goes to show that when it comes to this kind of stuff, music can be – it can get very complicated. Right. Yeah. But it actually becomes really easy once you know how to use your tools. Then it all makes sense. But, yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense to me. Like, like you say, it's like anything. It like, seems complicated from the outside, but – Just a quick break to talk about our sponsor, Audible.com. Audible.com is offering listeners of Brainstorm a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial membership. Membership gives you reduced prices on over 150,000 titles for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player and costs $14.95 per month after the first free month. Right now, I'm listening to Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me by Carol Tavris and Elliot Aronson. I think it's an important book, and if read honestly, can change the way people look at their own thinking. To get this book for free with your 30-day trial membership, go to audibletrial.com slash brainstorm. That's audibletrial.com slash brainstorm for a 30-day trial membership and a free audiobook download. I'd also like to tell you about reasonasproducts.com. T-shirts and hoodies with science, reason, and atheist themes. They've got great prices and offer a buy one, get one free with the coupon code BRAINSTORM. One lucky listener can get a free t-shirt by tweeting the word BRAINSTORM to the Reasonist Products Twitter account. That's at Reasonist, P-R-D-C-T-S. Go check out their website, ReasonistProducts.com. Right. Well, and and that's, that's another cool dynamic to it with, with the music, too, is it, it's... You know, when I do like my atheist activism, or when I, you know, you know, things along those lines, I tend to be a, a lot more sarcastic and satirical, right. funny. Um, I leave all the serious stuff to my music, um, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is just me, and I, I don't like to burden people with with the thoughts that I have sometimes. Um, but I also do know that I need to release those thoughts and. And so uh, when, when it comes to my music, I'm a lot more in depth. I'm a lot more, I'm a, I'm, I'm darker. I'm a, I'm a little more serious pants. And I, I think it's a good outlet because, you know, like we've talked about before, I feel like some people are, are publicly too, um, and I don't want to say public yet. I just mean some people overall become this serious pants person. Right. When, yeah. So then it's hard to even imagine them laughing. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, it, I feel like with, with a lot of people in any in any situation, when you're always serious and you're always pissed off, it becomes harder for people um, to want to listen to you because they're probably just as pissed off, and now you're just repeating the same thing that they already know. And 
I feel like with music, I can kind of do my own thing, put out albums, but because I don't really advertise my music or anything, it's just there. But right. I feel like you know, if I'm gonna talk about activism, if I'm gonna talk about um, something in the public sphere, I'd, I'd rather be a little less serious because I feel like I, if I'm mad about a situation and somebody else is mad, I would rather joke about the situation, you know, to a point, and make them laugh. So right. that way they're not as mad. And now what ends up happening is now that that person's not mad anymore about the situation, I'm not mad. Now we can actually think clearly and maybe move forward with an actual uh, solution to whatever the issue is. Right. Instead of just sitting there yelling and <laughs> getting being pissed yeah. off. and Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there is a place for that. There, there is a time. Yeah. And there, are, there are things that piss people off and I get it. You know, and I'm the same way. I get pissed off too. But, uh, I just feel like, you know, when it comes to how can I make this world a better place, what can I do? I, I decided to focus my dark stuff to my music, keep that separate from the, the public stuff that I do to make it more enjoyable, you know, and, 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 and people do enjoy the music too. Um, but I don't want to be known for this super dark. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So you've been doing, uh, on a different vein, you've been doing the Pastor J videos for a, a while now. How, you got quite a few up there already. Yeah, I think I think I have like a hundred and thirty now, and <laughs> I, I I'm working on a script right now, and I got a script last night. Um, like I said before, um, one of my scriptwriters, Jay, he he sent me a script, and it was it was so funny to me uh, because. Well, one, I, I was trying not to laugh because my girlfriend was sleeping. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but, um, yeah, I've been doing the past with Jay videos. And, and just like we talked about before, that became a result of me trying to channel my anger and frustration, right? I, um, um, the, I saw the Rockstar energy drink commercial. And then, like, the same week, I saw the Megan Fox. No, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Not the Rockstar energy drink commercial. Uh, I completely fucked that up. The Monster Energy Drink, the one that girl was saying. Oh, you know, saying, yeah. And then, spiel. And, you know, <laughs> I guess Tosh.0 did a, a, red, uh, a web redemption on her, too, which is funny. Oh, but, okay. Um, I ended up doing seeing that, and then the same week I saw the Megan Fox walking through the, the, the oh, museum. Oh, yeah. That's pretty big. And, <laughs> yeah. And then all this happened after I was going through all that bullshit, you know, after I wrote the Forever album. And it, it – it was like something in my brain said, we're done. Like, like <laughs> it snapped. And I remember talking to my roommate and saying, we got to do a video. And she's like, what? I'm like, no, look, I have to make fun of this because it's so stupid. And so we did the Rockstar Energy Drink. And then after that, we did the Creationism. And I thought, and I, I didn't plan on it. I, I, I never planned on doing anything Pastor J related. I just thought, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a troll for a minute. And so... <laughs> We did those videos and it felt good. It felt good to pretend to be this pastor. And, and I started making more videos and I started to realize it was good therapy for me. Um, and I also felt like I was doing some sort of good because I felt like if I sound this stupid, <laughs> right. right? if I sound this stupid as a pastor saying what pastors already do say, um, maybe somebody who – who's watching my video will look at me and go, wow, Pastor Jay sounded so stupid there. And then if they actually hear the real argument from a real Christian, they're going to go, wait a minute. That that's the same thing. Pastor Jay said, I just said that's, that it sounded really stupid. <laughs> right. Right. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if anybody actually thinks that way. Um, and that's not exactly why I do my, videos, right. Yeah. But, but it, it, it became a way for me to respond to some of the, the, and for let me let me say this too. Like I'm not saying all Christians are stupid. I'm not saying. Well, yeah, no, you know, of course not. Because <laughs> yeah. um, for the most part, whenever I do these videos, I'm I'm usually like responding to or I'm mimicking some of the crazier claims that I've heard. Um, and I'm also doing like I'm doing a new series right now called the Fine Tune Universe, where whenever I hear the fine tune argument, like oh look how perfect this this world is, and look how uh, yeah, blah blah blah, I, I look at some of the aspects of this world that aren't. Um, really perfect, like uh, the roly poly that that will basically it's not a roly poly, but it's a it's a uh, it's a cousin or whatever. Uh, it lives in the water and it will latch on to a fish's gills and um, it turns into a female if there are no females present. 
which is one weird thing. And then it goes into the fish, and it replaces the fish's tongue with itself, so it becomes the fish's tongue. It's a okay. parasite. Right. Um, th there's, a, there's a little mite that basically – you have this female mite, and it has babies inside of her. Uh, the mite only lives a few days. Uh, when it has babies, there's always one male and like four or five or six females – um, the females inside this mite basically um, – or the brother has sex with all the, the sister mites. And then the brother dies, never leaves the mom's wombs and, womb, and then the girl will, will eat their way out of their mother's womb. And then they – it repeats that cycle. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, they, yeah, there's a, there's a plan. And I cover these in all the videos. But basically, I look at things like this. I'm like, how the fuck is that fine too, man? <laughs> and, 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 and you can't say man's sin or whatever because – Look, you can say all you want about God and this and that, but God is not – if God exists, he's not that stupid where he's going to like curse a fucking dust mite because <laughs> yeah. you know, because a man ate – or a woman ate a fucking apple. Like it, totally so, unrelated. <laughs> yeah, and so for me, I hear these things and my brain yeah. just goes, no, there's no fucking way. And, and, and um, you know, like my, my newest video is going to be on were dinosaurs in Noah's Ark. Um, and then Rachel, my paleontologist girlfriend, she, she brought up um, the idea. Uh, and for those that know, Rachel is uh, she's the co-host for Atheist on Air now. Um, and she you know she digs dinos. Um, she, uh, she she loves science. She, evolution is it's her thing. So we talk about this thing all the time. And when I brought up the, the dinosaurs in the ark, she she asked, "What about bacteria? What about plants?" I'm like, "Oh my God, I got to make another video on that." <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's like I said, it, it's it's. It's my way of coping with the stupidity or what I think is stupid. Um, so while other people will have these amazing, serious conversations and talks, I, I'm not stupid, but I don't think that I have the patience enough to deal with having these conversations on a daily basis with, you know, is God real? Like, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, yeah, I don't think it's, it, it, it's worth a conversation, but I do think it's worth – making a mockery out of what I think is, is silly. And again, it's not the people, it's, it's the arguments. And so, For sure. and so, and so that's where it, it kind of took on a life of its own. And like I've said before, I couldn't, I couldn't do this stuff or at least not as good as I do without the script writers that I have, um, without the support. I mean, I have uh, people that contribute and support me like Lucy Burroughs, um, Jay Crowfoot, Jeremy Stevens, Jason Lewis, and I have a bunch of other people that have, that come in and will, will send me scripts and send me ideas, and I'll bounce off ideas, you know, to them. And, and funny people, man, they, these are the funniest people I know, and they, they make it work. But yeah, so that, that's where I basically, that's where I feel like I fit in when it comes to the activist community. Part of it is uh, me making people chill out, making people relax. So when they do address these serious issues. Um, they can do it. They can do it without being so angry. Because, because I, I, I'm not going to say that these serious topics are not important. Right. E even the podcasters out there and the, and the people that do public stuff that I don't agree with and don't like at all, I still, even them, I will say they're doing some good for, you know, for the for the public and they're 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 making people aware. And I, I say it through gritted teeth, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to be dishonest about that. They they right. they do great things too. But I feel like if, if, if some of these people, I can make them laugh in some way, that way it, it, it makes me feel good because now they can go and address these issues and maybe not be so pissed off. And, I, and also at the same time, I feel like maybe a Christian will watch what I'm, you know, one of my videos and uh, or somebody that believes and go, you know what, that's a really good point. That, that doesn't make any sense. How does that even work? And make it at least make them look into what their, their belief is and make them question it and ask these important questions that we all ask. Yeah, it makes me think of, uh, like, uh, there's a lot of really good podcasts that tackle things in a very serious and intelligent way, and I always say, we're not that podcast. <laughs> and, and like I said, they, you know, they, they, have, they have their place, and, and but I, I think part of me thinks not everyone needs to do that, right? Right. Those those people have already covered the this serious stuff. Let, you know, and so I, cause I see a lot of people do that. They'll start their own podcast or whatever. Nobody I know personally, but just people. You know, if I'm looking, and they want to copy these other people, I'm like, no, do your own thing. Like, yeah, let's address these issues, but you know, let's you know, let's talk about different things. Because what it ends up turning into is everyone's just kind of regurgitating the same yeah. thing. But but I have to also admit though, I, I can't be a dick about that because I have to admit that 
maybe there is an audience for that person, but maybe there's not an audience for the other person. Okay. And so maybe this one podcast will talk about serious issues and the other one will also, but maybe they don't know, they're not aware of the two podcasts together. So you know, it, it, it's, it's not a black and white thing. Uh, it's, it's a huge gray area. And I'd be wrong to say that somebody's doing it the wrong way. Again, a lot of this comes from the, my my own head and what I see. So yeah. I, I, I can't be dishonest. I can't say that anybody's doing it wrong. But what I can say is, regardless of how people are doing it, I think it's good that people take a break and laugh at you know certain situations. Maybe and it, it could be in private. That's fine. But at least just have a good time. And you know, people see that like with my videos, I, I sometimes attack atheists, quote unquote. <laughs> And those are fun because the dialogue in some of the comments, sometimes it's funny, but sometimes it's serious. And sometimes a lot of atheists uh, will see what I'm doing and go, oh, shit, you're, you're a po. I see what you did. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and what ends up happening is they see that what I'm doing is I'm using the same arguments that Christian use, Christians use about, oh, like you're just angry at God. So I reference that a lot. Like I'm not angry at God anymore, so I'm a Christian again. You know, it's like <laughs> – Jeez, you know, yeah. Yeah, so – you know, and, you know I, I'm not for everybody. Some people think it's great. Some people think it's not great. But again, it, it goes to show that it's not a black and white thing because I feel the same way about other podcasts. Sometimes for it's sure. not for me. You know, so yeah. But I, I think with all that being said, I think as a whole, I think everybody is equally as important. Um, not, not, I, and I will exclude the people that just want the money and they're just trying to be famous for fame's sake, right? Right. People that really care and, and that are going out there, whether I agree with their methods or not, I really think that everyone is doing a pretty damn good job at, at, at exposing some of the um, – uh, how do I say that? Not, not, not exposing, but they're, they're, they're bringing to light what atheism really is and, and what atheists are. And, and so I, I, I applaud every, every one of them that are that they're, that they're, really trying hard so so i, I will i do want to say that it's not like i'm better than everybody it's just you know we all have our own place you know yeah i uh i mean i just i often feel like i wish i could support everybody that does it yeah you know or i could you know even just spend all the time listening to everybody's podcast because there's so many there and yeah. they're all good in a different way so it'd be cool to be able to listen to them and share it and but well, you, you know what? One of the things I've learned, um, because I have a quite a, I have a few friends that, that do a lot of these podcasts, and yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. Sometimes I don't have the time, and I'll get to them when I when I, when I get to them. But I I realize that you can support anybody in so many different ways, it, even if it's just the share of their episode. That's right? true. Um, you know, in fact, if I had the money, I'd, I'd be donating to everybody. You know, and I'm sure. Right. But at the same time, I feel like 99 percent of the people that do this aren't interested in the money. Sure, the money helps and sure, like it, it, you know, it helps them buy a new microphone or whatever. But not everybody is trying to be a millionaire out there. So there are a few. Oh, exactly. <laughs> there are a few, but not everybody. Right. But, yeah. but I feel like supporting them, offering your help when you can help. Hey, do you want me to do this for you? Can I make your job easier? You want me to promote you? You want me to share your post? I mean, those are the things that, that mean a lot to, to a lot of people because, like I said before, I said you at the beginning, you know, and this applies to all aspects of life. It, it takes a village to raise a family, whether it comes whether it comes out of music or, or podcasting. Sometimes if you try and do it by yourself, unless you're fucking that amazing, you're not going to – you're not going to reach people that you need to. For sure. I notice how I said reach people that you need to over being famous, right? Because <laughs> it, it, yeah. it's, it's not about being famous or it isn't about money. It isn't about being like this fucking super awesome person. It's about reaching people that need to hear things. A That's lot of times, most, yeah. yeah. It's it's just about reaching the people who want to be reached. Like, yeah. And that's why. Yep. Yeah. They're, and that, they're looking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's how it should be. And it's – um. And that's what you just said right there. They're out there looking. There are so many different people, and not everyone's going to be reached the same way. So if I, if I have to share three podcasts or YouTube channels just to have one of them reach somebody who's asking legitimate questions, for sure, that's that's important to me. So I think you know, for people that don't know how to help, that's the best thing you can do is, is spread the information, share it, um, you know. And, and, and focus more on, on talking about the podcast that you like and spreading the good information and just putting it out there, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's actually uh, been an hour already, according to my recording. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, I, I apologize to anybody in advance for, or not in advance, <laughs> but I apologize to anybody for fucking rambling on and going back and forth with my thought process. I just woke up, so. <laughs> oh, shit, your brain works better than mine does when I oh, wake up. <laughs> I, I haven't even had my Rockstar energy drink yet, so I'm still like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, shit. I guess before I let, before I get you to go or whatever, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Camo. Camo? Yep. Okay. So I was yeah. thinking so, like Como? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. It, it, this is kind of funny, um, but it's, yeah, people used to pronounce it Como, and in, in school, you can only imagine the names I was called. Oh, yeah. I, I had Como the Homo, and then. You know, people would call me Jay and then pronounce my last name Como, so they call it, instead of Jay Como, they call me Gay Homo. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, but um, but yeah, it, I mean, some people say Como, and I, I don't really, you know, I'm not a big uh, name Nazi, so if people say Como, that's fine too. Como, I, I some people pronounce it Kamie U or something. <laughs> like, oh jeez, <laughs> <laughs> so. I wasn't gonna go that way. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I thought for sure it was kind of. Como or Camus or, or yeah, yeah yeah it's French. There's a lot of Canadians or a lot of Camos up in Can- uh, Canada. So yeah. Um. All right, on man. Thanks for coming on. Is there anything? Uh, I guess you mentioned you're involved with Atheists on Air and you got the Pastor J YouTube channel. Anything else you want to? Yeah. Shout out to boat? Yeah. I'll, if you don't mind, I'll plug some of the um, some of my friends who are are also doing a. Uh, YouTube slash uh, podcast. There's for sure. The, there's the Roscoe Show. Um, it's R O S C O Show. It's just theroscoeshow.com. If you go on there, um, he's been doing podcasts. He also has a YouTube channel where he's just basically putting his podcast up. Uh, Ross was great because he he. I won't say what he is or isn't because I know that's up to him. But he <laughs> wants he. I will say he thinks more like you and I. But he wants his podcast to be. To be uh, about everybody, all inclusive. So he has psychics on, he has atheists on, he has really, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I think it's great because it's a, it's a way for everyone to talk and everybody for everybody to make up their own mind. Um, I know there's another podcast back in the, day, in the day that did that, and I thought it was great because as an atheist, I could hear what these people say, and how it would kind of help me debunk their claims. And so he does right. a good job of that. Um, uh, there's also a YouTube channel called "I Have Found No God in These Heavens." Um, that's my, my, my friend uh, who passed away back in April. That That's his channel, but his wife's keeping it active, and we're we're playing a part. I've been doing some videos on that. And that's more of a serious channel, too. So um, even though I, I am on that channel, it's not as comical. Um, but I think it's great because it helps people that really want to find answers. Um, uh, yeah, then there's a, uh, Atheist on Air. And I, I know there's one or two. I'm going to get a lot of shit. There's like a thousand. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't want to take up the show with that, but uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to know of any more, uh, just send me a message on Facebook or email me. Um, if you guys want to email me at my Pastor J channel, it's called Know the Truth, but it's spelled K-O-N-W, the T-R-U-T at gmail.com. So um, send me an email or whatever. I think it would be great to hear from you. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Man. All right on, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for letting me uh, talk about music. I don't get to that much. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good to, good to listen to. Like, that was a lot of information that I didn't actually have before. So. <laughs> a lot of information, period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure when I'm going through the editing, I'll I'll absorb more of it, too. So. Right. All right. Well, I'll let you go here, and I guess have a good one, man. All right. Yeah, let me know when it's up. Send me the link. I'd like to hear it, so. For sure, we'll do. All right, man. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Right, bye. Okay. I hope you enjoyed listening to my chat with Jason. He's a very cool guy. I'm glad I got a chance to talk to him. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel, Know the Truth, for his Pastor J videos. Know the Truth is spelled K O N W T H E T R U T. I'm almost done a couple sets of show notes, so look for that to come out soon, and then there will be some notes for this episode. I'll actually give a few podcasters a shout out here. I want you to check out the In the Name of God podcast. I just listened to like four episodes yesterday, and I really enjoy it. Go check out No Religion Required. I'm sure I've recommended that before. 
and go check out Skeptically Challenged. They're all great shows with great hosts and definitely worth your time. If you want to keep up to date with our show, come on over and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash brainstorm podcast or follow us on Twitter at brainstorm pod. For ad free episodes and extra content, keep an eye on our Patreon feed. Just go to patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast and become a patron for just a dollar an episode. I'll produce ad free episodes when we reach five patrons. Any new patrons will get a shout out in the next episode. And when we reach 10 patrons, I'll go back and start producing bonus content. As usual, I'll mention that we're only recording one episode a month. But if we can manage to reach 100 bucks an episode, then we can go back to every two weeks. If you can't afford to help us out on Patreon, or go, just go to iTunes or Stitcher and give us a rating and write a review. Or you can go and buy Brainstorm gear from cafepress.ca slash brainstormpodcastgear. Or just go to our website and click on the Cafe Press link. Keep an eye out for our various t-shirt campaigns. I'm always designing new shirts and putting them up on T-Chip for a limited pr- time at a very good price before adding them to the Cafe Press store. And remember to send us those pics of you wearing Brainstorm gear, and we'll throw them up on the listener page. A couple things I need to mention. First is the non-conference in Kitchener, Ontario. Tickets are available at www.thenon-conference.com, and it's happening on August 21st. With speakers like Lawrence Krauss, Armin Navabi, Christine Shalska, and Stephanie Katormson, it's sure to be a well worth the price of admission and travel. Also, there's the River City Reason Fest in Winnipeg, Manitoba on September 19th and 20th. They've got some great speakers that include Greta Christina, Tracy Harris, and PZ Myers. Tickets are available at early bird prices and for students right now at rivercityreasonfest.org. There's also... <laughs> An event happening in Red Deer, Alberta on October 17th and 18th. The None of the Above Alberta Secular Conference features Nathan Phelps, Sarah Moorhead, and Matt Dillahunty as guest speakers. Tickets are available until September 18th at eventbrite.com slash none dash of dash the dash above dash ab dash secular dash conference dash tickets. I'll definitely have to post that link in the show notes. <laughs> Lastly, I want to tell you about our local event fundraiser. The Brainstorm Podcast is sponsoring Saskatchewan's first ever Shift to Reason conference in Regina, Saskatchewan. Tentatively booked for the end of April 2016, we have a possible venue and have talked to some big name speakers who will be announced when things, once things are more definite. We're looking for support to get things moving. With a lofty goal of 12 grand, that will make it possible for us to fly in some great speakers, offer a classy venue with great sound and video capabilities, as well as offer lunch to those in attendance. Any contribution of $120 or more will reserve a ticket when they become available. We're currently in the process of developing different levels for business or organization sponsorships. You can go contribute to our event at gofundme.com slash shift to reason. We've also got a Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash shift to reason. Links to all those events and websites will be in the show notes, assuming I get them out before everything happens. I want to know what you love and hate about the show. So if you've got any comments, criticisms, praise, accolades, or corrections, mail me at mail at brainstormblog.net or go to the website brainstormblog.net and click the contact tab. I will respond to your email. Thanks again for listening and have a good one. Okay, I normally don't do this, but after recording this interview and then writing the intro-outro script, Jason in, uh, released a new album on his band camp. He mentioned earlier in the, epi- in the discussion a song called Lost is his only atheist-themed song, and that's on his new on the new album. 
You can find that at a lost state of mind altogether dot bandcamp dot com. I'm gonna play out with lost. Oh, man.